So why do I love SQL Monitor so much? Well, rather than giving you a laundry list of reasons, I thought it would be easier to create a short video and just show you some of the things I do at SQL Monitor when it comes to examining an execution plan and show you the benefits that I get from it. So first thing I love most about it is the fact that I can move all of the columns around in the execution plan so that I can put the actual number of rows returned by each of the operations in the plan right next to the estimated number of rows so that I can do a comparison to see whether or not the optimizer has got good cardinality estimates for each step in the plan. The other cool thing I love is the fact that we've got the activities column over here which tells me exactly where the time is being spent on each operation and what we're up to. So for example, if I hover over that little green bar, you'll see the dark green or emerald green shows that that was CPU time spent in the in-memory column store. The light green is just CPU time spent uh, for that operation. So I can see nearly half the amount of time was spent just accessing that large table. I also get some great information in the plan notes. So all the information that would normally appear underneath the execution plan, if I was to display it using DBMS X plan, that's all available to me here as well in SQL Monitor by just clicking on that little yellow sticky. So I also love the fact that I get lots of information about where and how the SQL statement was executed. If I look in the upper left hand corner of the screen, I get to see that we used a parallel degree of 18 for this SQL statement and that it was executed across two rack nodes. I also get information overall about what happened. I see it took nine seconds to execute the query, but nearly three minutes worth of database time was used to do that. I can see where that database time was spent, the majority of it luckily enough in this case on the CPU. Um, but I can also see some other smaller things that are going on there. Now, before we look at the other tabs, um, I just want to show you one last thing. If I do a, a shift control alt R, it's going to actually open a new column uh, in the execution plan, but that's not there by default and it's called the response time. So what that's going to do is show me the overall response time from the client's perspective and where that time was actually spent. So what did they see? Things that we don't normally get to see, which is really nice. One of which is, ooh, there is a little parallel skew going on there. So something for us to take a look at in the other tabs as well as being able to see the plan as a table in the usual format that we're used to. I can also see it as a tree if I wish, uh, and I can zoom in and out on that tree. I can turn it uh, from horizontal to vertical too and navigate up and down it if I wish, increasing and decreasing the size, moving the screen so that I can um, get a closer look at what's going on uh, and zoom back in again. I can also get more information on this tab if I switch the plan back to being tabular. I get to see information on the number of rows and uh, IOs or reads that are going on. I also get to see the filter information. So what filter predicates from the query are being used here uh, and access predi predicates. So quite useful information. For example, I can see which where clause predicates were used at that step in the plan. And again, over here, I can move the columns around. I always like to have my line IDs right at the end on the left hand side, just as they are in the um, text version of the plan. So I can move that around too. I also get to see partition pruning information at this particular tab as well. So I can see how many partitions in a partition table actually got accessed. I also get information about parallel server processes. So I can not only see how many parallel server processes are being used for this query, I can see which instance in my rack environment these parallel server processes were issued on. But if I drill down by clicking on these little plus signs, what I can actually see is whether or not I got an even distribution of work across the parallel server processes. In other words, is there some kind of a data skew that's causing a bottleneck in my query because one parallel server process is doing most of the work and we're waiting on that guy to finish. So in this case, looks good. It seems to be an even distribution of work across the parallel server processes. I can also get a look across the execution of the SQL statement to see what's going on on a system level. So am I waiting on CPU? Am I waiting on IO? What's going on? Um, I can see that there in the activities. And I can also take a look just at general metrics. So CPU use for the statement, memory, IO, 
um, an I.O. request, so the throughput in the I.O., and I can tell where it's coming from. So a lot of powerful information in, uh, wrapped up in one single report.